Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. When Jordan got to the hospital, Olivia, Sam, and Laura were there. Jordan told them the FBI was involved in the ongoing search for the shooter, and Olivia updated him on Dante's status in the operating room. Olivia wanted the person who shot Dante to be imprisoned indefinitely, even though she knew he would be fine. When Brooke Lynn got to the hospital, she saw Chase. Though he was glad to see her, he wished he could feel more like he was making a difference. As Chase made the decision to go donate blood, Jordan came over. An anxious Brooke Lynn pondered whether Jordan had encountered a similar circumstance after he left. More than once, and it was a nightmare every time she responded. Jordan counseled Brooke Lynn to always be open and honest with Chase about her emotions after Brooke Lynn revealed how afraid she was for him. When Carly got at the Quartermain estate, Drew told her that he was taking care of Danny and Rocco on Sam's behalf. At that moment, the boys came out of the living room, fighting over a portable game that Rocco had dropped. Danny revealed that Rocco had vanished and that all he wanted was his father. When Drew's phone rang, it was Sam calling to see how the boys were doing. He conceded that Rocco was in need of a hug. Sam told him that aid was on its way and thanked him for sticking. Sam went over to Laura after hanging up the phone and asked for a favor. Olivia became concerned after a short while about the absence of updates, but Sam was confident that Dante wouldn't quit up. When Chase and Brooke Lynn got back together, he told her that giving blood had helped him to relax. Portia came over and told everyone that Dante's procedure was going great. He was in decent vital signs, but there had been extensive damage, she said. Although Sam and Olivia understood that Dante was happier than anything as a police officer, they still wished he had chosen a different career path. Jordan located Portia, and the two of them discussed Don's goodness. Jordan was reminded of Nathan and how he lost his life while performing his duty. She said that, in her opinion, every person who wore the badge was a hero. Although Brooke Lynn was welcome to stay with him, Chase persuaded her to return home and get some rest. The thought crossed his mind, this isn't what you signed up for. Though Brooke Lynn acknowledged that she was worried for him on a daily basis, her love for him was too great to conceal her dread. He offered her a way out, but she insisted that he never tell her to go. They embraced as he kept his word. After Dante's surgery, Portia went back to the gathering waiting for him and told them he was being sent to the intensive care unit. She went on to say that although he was in severe condition, the doctors thought they had fixed all of the damage. When Olivia questioned whether he would make a full recovery, Portia said it was a huge step in the right direction. In exchange for Brooke Lynn's all-night support, it relieved Chase asked what he could do for her. She said, take me home, and they walked out. Olivia restated that Dante was a warrior, and Jordan followed Portia out the door. Olivia gave Sam a tearful embrace. When Laura got to the quarter main estate, Rocco inquired about Dante. Laura retorted that Dante was receiving treatment from the best physicians. After apologizing to take a call, Danny and Laura entered the living room. When Carly visited Danny, he assured her he was okay. Carly mentioned how much Danny resembled Jason. She reassured him that he was at the right place with Rocco and that it was okay for him to acknowledge his feelings. Laura brought up the broken video game in the living room, sparking a discussion on video games in general. He expressed amazement that his grandmother was playing them and proposed that they do so after Dante recovered. He declined Laura's invitation to discuss about Dante. She reassured him that although she was worried too, they should remain optimistic. She gave him a hug and said she would be there for him for however long he needed. When Drew came back a little bit later, Laura told him that she and Rocco were planning a video game date with Dante. Although Laura proposed having Rocco spend the night with her and Kevin, Rocco insisted on staying in case Scout woke up afraid. A few minutes later, Laura was in the foyer, feeling encouraged that Rocco wanted to take care of Scout. After Laura left, Carly went downstairs to reassure Drew that Scout was sound asleep. 
After a tiring day, she excused herself to unwind at home. She helped with the boys, and Drew praised her for it. She left after he gave her a kiss. With his phone open, Rocco was sitting in the living room staring at a photo of Dante. Danny took a seat beside him, and Rocco moved slightly closer to him. Sonny was taken aback when he saw Jason in the video in the hospital chapel and surmised that any digital video could be edited. He was told by Ava that Spinelli had confirmed the footage. After examining all the information, Ava concluded that Jason was trying to harm Sonny, but Sonny wasn't buying it. She informed him that the individual responsible for the entire situation went by the name Stone, which was a component of Spinelli's moniker for Jason, Stone Cold. But he knew Jason better than she did, she thought, and she would follow his instincts. He found it amusing that she was the only person he seemed to be able to trust, and she made him vow to use caution. After mentioning that he had seen a dead man walking in the video, Spinelli eventually showed Maxie. There was a loud tap on the door, so they didn't have time to be shocked. Jagger declared that the FBI was in possession of a search warrant. Allowing him entry, Spinelli maintained that Maxie was not involved in any of it. When Jagger insisted on seeing Spinelli's film from the evening, he handed him the computer screen with the words, no footage available. Spinelli urged that Maxie follow him, and a few minutes later, they were both handcuffed. Maxie told Jagger about her dad, Mac, and how much he loved Jagger. Jagger told her to inform Mac that he regretted having to arrest Mac's daughter for obstruction of justice and apologized for taking so long to recognize her. Maxie pleaded with Jagger not to phone Felicia after he threatened to do so. She told Spinelli that they should be proud of themselves for standing up for their friend, who has repeatedly saved their lives. Felicia would certainly be proud. Maxie's drone film was in the backup disc, and Spinelli told Jagger about it because he wouldn't allow him go to jail for it. Grabbing the drive, Jagger demanded to know the password. To Maxie's joy, Spinelli replied that the password was Maximista. Spinelli responded that he had a valid motive for his actions. He needed to keep Maxie out of jail. To Maxie's incredulous statement that they had turned their friend over to the FBI. He said, You're the woman I love, and they planted a kiss. After a short while, Jagger viewed the Jason video on his phone. What would they do with Spinelli was the question in the mind of another agent. As they had achieved their goal, Jagger retorted, Now we're going after Jason Morgan. Editors have independently selected all of the goods and services that are listed. On the other hand, Soaps.com might get paid a commission for orders made through its retail links, and the retailer might get some data that can be audited for bookkeeping purposes. Throughout his tenure as Jason on General Hospital, Steve Burton has portrayed a variety of romantic interests for the character including Karen and Keisha when he was younger, Robin and Sam, Elizabeth and Courtney. But now that he's back from the dead, a third time if you include the time we believed Drew had brought him back to life. It's obvious where he's going to go romantically. Carly is going to be the lucky lady, with Britt pushing up daisies. Consider it. When Jason needed assistance after being shot, who did he turn to? Carly. Which individual did he first reveal himself to, Carly? If he needed to be hidden from the authorities, and some concealment was required, who was he confident would do it? Carly. Thanks for watching if you liked this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.